you know, the Storm Twins look more like fraternal twins. They're so fraternal, they're almost identical. And yes, I know there is a difference. Hello, today I will not only be giving you one, but three great Wingrave builds. Now Wingrave is arguably the best starter wayfinder currently. This first build will be tailored towards ability power and in that build, what you'll wanna do is put three points into Righteous Strike. The reason why you'll wanna put three points into Righteous Strike is because you'll be going for healing in this ability build and Wingrave is the best healer out of all of the Wayfinders. Now, why would you want to put three points into Righteous Strike? You'll see that when healing, you'll get 15% extra damage and healing. And at level three of this, it'll bring back some of your resilience. Now, you'll see why we want a resilience later on in this build. You'll then want to put three points into Radiant Pulse. The reason why you want this is because you want to be able to heal your allies while they're behind this shield. Now, the goal of this build is healing. Lastly, you'll wanna put one point into his ultimate to where you'll get 50% extra invulnerability within his shield. Going into affinities, you'll wanna put 15 points into focus because you'll do 10% reduced damage per pulse when using a finisher move on the enemy. Also, damage surge will give you additional 5% and weapon power for eight seconds for each healing pulse that you receive. Next, you'll wanna put five points into Discipline. You'll want Crusader's Blessing because the Healing Pulse will restore 10% of your Resilience Meter per pulse. Lastly, you'll want nine points into Instinct. This will give you Healing Wave, which will increase the healing of all Healing Pulse by 20%. The armor set that you will want to obtain for this healing build slash ability build would be the Cerebral set, which is obtained by defeating the Dread Legion. I have a video on how to defeat the Dread Legion if you are stuck on him. It's a little bit more of an annoying boss than normal. As far as obtaining the set for all epic sets, the drop chance for each set is currently to 0.57% per run. You'll have additional 10% in your resilience, your crit rating, and your ability power. Now you see you have resilience and ability power, which is why we spec into some of these items within your abilities chart. As for your weapon of choice, right now I am glitched because this is early access. However, the weapon I would use would be the Harvest Moon. The reason why I choose the Harvest Moon is the buildup for his finisher is insane. What that does is give you the heal impulse as quickly as possible, especially whenever you use his weapons skill. Uh, you just consistently get ults and you could just use that to farm up heal impulse over and over again. Now, the reason why I choose the Harvest Moon over something like the shotgun or something like that is because it does not help your passive as well as people who tend to use the weapons seem to neglect the fact that they have their abilities so that would just be more towards a weapon power build than a ability build now this will give you a lot of resilience a lot of your ability power back especially whenever you use your Harvest Moon, that constant attack will give you your ability power back. Uh, this is by no means an Echoes build guide, and I will have something for Echoes later. Uh, what you'll want is just to spec in to high resilience, high crit rating, as well as high ability power. So uh, I will just browse over a few of the items that you'll want. As far as the Rush Echoes, what you'll want to use is the Night Maul's Echo, which is obtained by the Night Maul, which is in the Highlands by using Worm Bait down in the south portion of the map within the Highlands. What you'll also want is the Dread Legion's Echo, which will give you 25% 
ability power for 10 seconds, which is nothing but great. As far as the Night Malls Echo, the reason why you'll want this is because every time you'll get hit, you will have a one, the initial weapon damage equal to 125% of your uh, weapon power, which is great, as well as additional 35% magical damage equal to your ability power, which just adds on in, with your ability build for this character. And you don't have to do anything at all. Uh, just going on for more resilience and then I'll just let this go through for what you'll want to aim for. Potions, I'll use both the Unstable Ancient Star tier as well as the Unfiltered Dragon Skin Blood. Now I use these because it's just additional hits that you get passively for the next 60 seconds. You can also alt for something that gives you ability power because it's ability power build, right? You'll want to farm out the Storm Twins artifact as it'll give you healing flask applied whenever using heals. So it's just extra healing for your team as well as farm out the first artifact, which will give you additional 5% when at full health of ability power. Your masteries, what I would go for under the tree for the daggers would be relentless because that will just gives you an additional 5% of resilience. And then by the time you're at mastery level three, your critical hits will give you uh, 10%. Now that all couples with the fact that the class is a critical rating class. So it's just, it's just an all around great build, right? If you are enjoying this video, please leave a like and a subscribe. And my random question for you guys is, if we know the speed of light, what is the speed of dark? For this next build, it will be more tailored towards break power. Now with that, what you'll wanna do is take one of the points that you have with Righteous Strike, and you'll wanna add that to Judgment, which additional hits on judged enemies deal additional break damage and that goes for the entire party the weapons i'll stick with the harvest moon i just like the harvest moon it's a great weapon and alternate to the harvest moon for your break power build personally a tried and true weapon for me would be the vanguard the reason why i'll get the vanguard is because it'll give you a great high damage break power for your impact now the reason why i tend to shy away from the vanguard is because it's a little weird with this ultimate in which for its rush echo what i would opt to have would be would be the blood spawn echo now, the reason why i use the blood spawn echo is because whenever you use the weapon ability for the vanguard uh I tend to jump the game pips for his ability over using the heavy attack. For some reason, jumping is better for me, right? So uh, I use the blood spawn echo to assist in that. However, personally for the break power build, a better echo to use would be the brood mother echo because this gives you a damage shield of an additional 25% of your max health, which this is a max health build to stack onto your damage reduction. Since you have low resilience and higher max health, this will proc once every two minutes. Now, what helps your build, because you have max health and low resilience, is the high physical damage, as well as the high max health. You have okay magic damage, and if that's something you wanna spec into, you can always spec into that. Masteries. I'm a bit biased. If you are using the Harvest Moon, I would go with the Iron Step, which will give you 20% damage reduction, which is basically additional resilience. Or if you are using the Vanguard, I would go the path of press the advantage, which gives you an entire latent power pip when guard breaking the enemy. Now this is a guard break build, so that's why I would go for that. A lot of people tend to use the Titan's Bane, which is also great for break damage. However, I personally find this weapon is really slow, so I opt to use something like the Harvest Moon 
or the Vanguard. I will go for the Beastmaster set. The reason why I'll go for the Beastmaster set is it'll give you 10% to your weapon power, max health, and break power. The high weapon power and break power is the staple of this build as if you were to use the Night Maul's Echo with this, it's just additional damage. This set could be obtained by defeating the Beastmaster, which is about a one to two minute fight. So it's easier to farm out than the Dread Legion set and this next set I'm about to tell you about. Now for the War Beast set, what you'll want to farm out is the Reaver War Bear Echo because this has high break power as well as max health, which you can use to min-max your character pretty well. Now before I get into the next set, I know the epic builds are really hard to farm out, so I'll give you a couple of honorable mentions to use in your journey to farm for these builds. So the first set you'll want would be the Last Breath set, which will give you a total of 10% in your weapon power and ability power. The next set you'll want would be the Bottle of Shadows set. That will give you a total of 10% in your ability power and your crit power. Now last, what you'll wanna farm out is the Sharda Effigy Core set. Now this will give you a total of 10% in your break power and your crit power. Now on to the final set. In this build, you can either keep your point on judgment or you can opt it for Righteous Strike it doesn't matter. The last set you'll want to receive is the Mars set, which you can receive from the Grand Deceiver encounter. Now, this set will have a total of 10% to your ability power and your break power, which is basically a hybrid for both the ability build and break build. I will still keep the Harvest Moon uh, and I will stick with the reduced income damage. Either or, it's a hybrid set more so. so Go for what's better for you as you'll have less resistance and be a little bit more squishy than before. Stick around as I'll have gameplay of me using both of these builds. So I'll be doing the Storm Twins for the record. I have farmed this roughly 500 times based off of the material they dropped. So yeah. If you've watched my last video, this is how far I've come, and I've only received a double attack mod slot for one of the accessories. I'm still looking to get the book, so we'll see. Maybe I'll get it today. So basically, this guy is immortal. Now this is me using the Vanguard, which is all right, but when I show you me using the Harvest Moon, you'll see a complete difference. Now you see as much health as I got right now, I'm just undying, it's pretty crazy. And I'm doing this with a level 13, so now with this build, you have break power, you have health, I have yet to use any of my pips or any of my heals. So this is great for when you're doing the gloom mechanics with the boss that enrages when they get half health. Like I'm just eating all of these attacks. This is basically the ultimate tank. And so what this does with the Harvest Moon is the weapon ability also empowers your teammates as well. Now watch, I have all this break damage and it just <laughs> like butter. It just breaks like butter. I can't believe it's not butter. It's just break damage. Let me show you that break power. You know, the Storm Twins look more like Fraternal Twins. They're so fraternal. They're almost identical. And yes, I know there is a difference. But just just look at this. Look how easy it's losing health. Give them ultimate healing, just ultimate break power. Ultimate damage is ridiculous. 
more so in the break power realm. It's for your it's for your teammates to just take over, and you could just tank every hit. Just look look at this, look at this. I don't even have to dodge. And all my teammates are just stayed alive easily. It's just as easy as that. And that is using the Beastmaster set with nothing but healing. So out of the two sets, I definitely enjoy the Fang B set because you you gain your healing pulse based off of your health. So I mean, it's nothing but helpful to get that. And then you get weapon power. It's just crazy for the set, especially for what you can use for its weapon skill. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe and leave a comment of the next build that you would like to see.